You see, most every kick-ass thematic card game is born, lives a casual and competitive life, but ultimately gets put down by its mummy daddy. But then the best of them rise again for one hell of an afterlife party. This, dear listener, is at least half the story for Android Netrunner. My name is Benji, and this is the guide to playing the ultimate asymmetrical dueling card game in this year of 20 and 2 twos. One thing this video will not be doing though is convincing you to try the game. Its reputation should be sufficient for you to give it a punt, and if you're a returning player, well, you don't need convincing. So whether you've ever envisaged yourself as a runner hacker or a big behemoth mega corporation, then let's get you into a game. There are, on this day and at this time, three main ways for you to get a game of Netrunner in, and thankfully we can categorise them into expensive, affordable and cheap. So let's take a look at each in that order. But very quickly, please do subscribe and do the likey likey. Grazie. Option 1 then, the expensive way, is obtaining the original products in paper form. As with most of Fantasy Flight Games LCGs, these came along in core sets, deluxe expansions and smaller box expansion cycles. Now the two core sets, the original released in 2012 and the revised in 2017, has all you need to make interchangeable decks for each of the runner and corp factions, and maybe just the ticket for you. The good news is that because of the print run of both of these starter products, it's still not that painfully expensive picking these up on aftermarket sites like eBay and Facebook Marketplace. However, if you're serious about brewing and playing with everything the game had to offer, then pretty much every other expansion released has skyrocketed in price since the game's discontinuation in 2018. That means you either need deep pockets or the ability to trade for these to get anywhere. This as they say then is the purest choice for if you want to replicate what makes and made this game so great on the tabletop. But sadly for most people it's going to be cost prohibitive if you want to explore every nook and cranny. So now we get to the more affordable option, which I suspect will be the launch point for most of you that want to play Netrunner seriously, and that option B is the Nisei Collective, or just plain Nisei, a fan-led continuing committee that is as polished and as semi-official as you will find a resource for the continuation of an old card game. Not only are they responsible for injecting new and reprinted content to the big wide world, but they're also the de facto arbiters of a living rulebook, and they do their bit to support organised play as well. One big, beautiful umbrella. But how does this help you play the game? Well, as I mentioned, they playtest and release new sets and cards for Netrunner on the semi-regular, and each and every one of said cards is available free as a print and play PDF. So theoretically you could spend the next hour or so printing and sleeving cards and getting to the table toot sweet. But if the idea of printing the two 30 something decks for the tutorial and the 100 plus others that round out the starter set seems an effort too far, then they've kindly identified two reputable print on demand companies to do the dirty work for you. As is made helpfully clear on the website, you have two automated printing choices. The first is with drive through cards, who they say provide the most comparable card stock to the real thing, and provide better kickback to Nisei as well. The most notable downside being geographically dependent, as the cost to ship outside of the US of A is on the steep side. Your other choice is Make Playing Cards, which can print you the card sets in either very slightly thinner than FFG cardstock with their standard quality, or ever so slightly thicker than FFG cardstock premium quality. The secondary upside to the using these is that they also have more competitive global shipping rates. I suspect that the clarity of card art in all of these options will be comparable, so the choices boil down to thickness of cardstock and shipping location. I personally opted for print and play though because that gave me an excuse to go headfirst down the rabbit hole and see how goddamn awesome I could make proxies for card games. A helpful skill, and of course not just for Netrunner. I also didn't want to half arse it, so a bunch of trial and error later and I'm extremely happy with the results. Alas, that process is a video for another day. 
Don't expect to be waiting too long though because I'm uber eager to show you that it's a lot easier than you might think making awesome proxies. Watch this space. Before we move on though, there are ways to print proxies of the licensed print run. Just check out proxynexus.net for an automated process the PDF's low resolution copies of any or all cards you might want. Which brings us to the cheap option, aka Internet Browser Netrunner, which as much as it pains me to say, more than exceeded my expectations. Being an IRL card gamer at heart, I tried to limit my exposure to virtual gaming, but in this day and age you can only buck trends so much. That's right old man, get off your soapbox. But back on point, we have the almighty Ginteki.net. That is the best port of a card game I have ever come across in browser form. Considering the fact that you don't have to install a thing, this is how you get up and running with Android Netrunner with the least amount of pain, suffering and waiting. Seriously, you've got everything here. An excellent and informative help section that points you in the right direction of learning the game if you need it. Which also provides answers to any questions you might have about the game's interface. But the best way to give props to Jinteki is to say that as a fairly novice player, I was able to load up a game, point, click and experiment for a couple of minutes and be reasonably au okay with the whole interface. Yes, it took me a minute to get the running and firing subroutines down pat, but still it's no surprise to me that a game as famous as this is the recipient of such a professional and streamlined pull. Not only that, Jinteki and Nisei work very much in tandem with each other as the Nisei tutorial decks are incorporated straight into your collection when you register on the website. And building a new deck or importing one you made earlier on NetrunnerDB.com is as easy as peasy gets. So that all goes to say, if you want to play a game of Netrunner with any card ever printed both licensed officially and Nisei unofficially, then it doesn't get much easier than this. In terms of the new player experience, there are any number of ways you can go. If you're the outgoing type, you can just pop your head up in Jinteki's chat feature and see if anyone's willing to teach you the game. You've also got a popular Discord channel, forum, Facebook group and so on and so forth. All of which I'll put a link to down below. If that doesn't tickle your fancy though, it's to the rulebook or YouTube how to play guides for you. But. But, but not so fast, there is also another quite magnificent tool for you to consider and its name is Cheeriburger. Which can do one of two things for you. A, it can provide a browser platform for you to learn the game interactively step by step, quite ingeniously I might add, and B, it also provides tutorial like games with an AI opponent just so you can get your feet wet before committing to playing another Humi. Neat, huh? So all that's really left to mention is the most notable formats that dictate what card pool everyone is deck building from, so you know exactly what table, virtual or otherwise, you're sitting at. To ease you into this somewhat daunting plethora of choices is one we've already talked about, the system gateway format, which is effectively Nisei's tutorial set of cards plus the extra deck building options in the set. Where your deck options are slimmed down and your runner and corp don't all have innate abilities. Your next step up from that which unless you net deck will see you don in your deck building boots is the startup format, which is basically the Nisei starter sets and their most recent cycle of cards. This format will be more than manageable for anyone that's played dueling deck construction games before. Standard and Eternal then round out the most played formats, the former combining the last few cycles of licensed FFG product with the bulk of what Nisei has released today and the latter being basically every card ever released across FFG and Nisei, with just a smattering of restricted cards so as to not break everything. But that really is enough information to get you started. I for one I'm going to be continuing my quest to print and play, and I'm going to hit up Jinteki for some gits and shiggles too. So expect to see both sides of the coin represented in future content. Alas, I've been the voice in your head, and this video has ended. <laughs>